Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Felicia and interviews can be really bland. Well, not unless you know your content really well and you can be creative with it. So I'm gonna run you through some tips to make your interviews pop. First thing to think about is who is your subject and what are they talking about? It is important to know this like the back of your hand because it will determine your camera movement or angles and also your lighting. The really important one here is to think about your lighting and how it affects your audience subconsciously. It's very important to know your lighting and how it can relate to your content because if you're shooting something that's really serious but the lighting is really high key, it might come across as a bit strange. And vice versa, if you're shooting something that is really upbeat and really happy and you're shooting it with a low key light, it's not good either. <laughs> so think about the message for the content that you're creating. Is it a corporate or a testimonial? Something really upbeat and happy? Shoot it potentially in high key lighting. Maybe you're doing something more serious like discussing darker topics or something that is very important. You might wanna do low key lighting. It's up to you and you alone to completely understand the content of what you're filming and light appropriately. You really don't wanna get the wrong message across. The second thing to think about is the location of your shoot and that works hand in hand with your lighting as well. When you're doing a recce of a location for an interview, consider the following thing. What are all the different ways that I can film this? What are all the different angles I can use? Which one of these angles is more appealing, but it's not too busy in the background to distract the audience? Is there any background noise or other things that might prevent us from filming there? And what is the existing light in the area? Is it that horrible down lighting? Is it harsh? Are you shooting in a warehouse with no windows? Are you shooting somewhere with a really nice window and maybe you want to use that as your key light? But once you've worked out where to shoot and which direction to shoot in, it's time to set up. So tip number three is to consider your technical detail. You have to consider a lot of different things when setting up for an interview. First of all, the camera positioning. And when you were doing your recce, you should have roughly worked out where you want to be. But you will need to determine how close you want to be to your subject and what focal length you want to be on. If you want more separation of foreground and background, you might want to shoot on a longer lens. Something from the 50 to 100 range is a really nice portrait lens, which can work really well for interviews. It also depends on your subject. If your subject is not comfortable in front of a camera and you want the camera further away so they don't get too distracted or start staring at the camera instead of the interviewer, then maybe you want to stick further back and shoot on a longer lens. Also, if you need more separation from the background, you can just move your subject forward and away from that background. Shooting on a longer focal length will also give you more space for your lighting. Framing wise, you should also consider the height of your camera because if you have your camera too high, your subject might look a little bit vulnerable. And if you have your camera too low, they might look too powerful. This is all a subconscious thing. It's something that your audience think about without even knowing it. So you still need to think about it yourself. Again, you don't wanna get the wrong message across. Great, so now we have our framing. It's time to start lighting. And you should have already thought about your lighting process before this, but now it's time to implement everything that you've thought about. Hopefully you've thought about the existing lights in the room. Maybe there's a lamp in the background you can use to separate your foreground to the background, as well as a window on the side that you can use as your key light, or maybe you wanna use it as a backlight. I don't know, whatever your situation is, you just need to think about the lighting that exists in the room and how you can use it. And if you can't use any of the lights in the room, maybe you need to set up your own. Typically interviews are shot with something called a three point lighting setup. If you don't know what I'm talking about, three point lighting setup is where you have a key, a fill and a backlight. Now this is a good standard, but you don't need to use this. You can break that rule completely. As long as you have a good key light and how you want it to look is how you want it to look, then that's fine. You don't need to shoot in this three point lighting setup, although it is a good technique to get you out of trouble. It is a standard across most interview style. You can create more depth in your shot using the lighting as well. For instance, if you're shooting down a corridor or maybe there's a room behind your subject that you can put a light into to create a little bit more interest and separate them a bit more from the background, that's a good place to start. The lighting doesn't have to be lighting up your subject. It can separate them from the background as well. Doing these sorts of things will help create interest to the image and all in all, make for a better interview. And the last thing to think about would be cutaways and other angles. 
When you're editing an interview, somebody might fumble halfway through and then what do you do? Do you have a jump cut like in YouTube videos? No, you're gonna want it to be seamless. So you're gonna want something to cover that up. So there's two different ways that you can cover up a jump cut. You can use an alternate angle, set up a different camera while you're filming so that that is static on like the hands or just a profile shot of that subject. And you can intercut that between your main camera and that cutaway angle. Alternatively, if you don't have another camera that you can set up in the interview, you can do cutaways. So take note during your interview or have your director take note during the interview about certain things that you would like to see in a cutaway while that person is talking on top. And then you can schedule some extra time after the interview to get those shots. A nice way to extend that also would be shooting at a higher frame rate for those. That way you've got some regular interview-like footage mixed in with some cinematic slow motion image. So thank you very much for watching. Those are my tips for getting an engaging interview. If you are trying to get an interview yourself, I really do hope that these tips have helped you in some way. And if you really enjoyed that video, please remember to give it a big fat thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my face and learn a little bit more about filmmaking in the process, remember to subscribe and I'll see you next Sunday.